My guest tonight is an award-winning comedian, author and screenwriter. David Baddiel is a comedian, playwright and best-selling children's author. In the 90s, he fronted shows like Fantasy Football and Baddiel and Skinner Unplanned. And of course, he co-wrote everyone's favourite football song, Three Lions. Now he's back with his new stand-up show, Trolls, Not the Dolls. Please welcome my guest, Mr. David Baddiel! <laughs> Hello. How are you? I'm all right, actually. How are you? I'm all right. You enjoying the election? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you? Have you got election fever? Yeah, I'm crazy for it. I tell you, it's a weird old thing, isn't it? I mean, as you've sort of been pointing out throughout the show, it's an entire spectrum of twats. Just entire... <laughs> Huge political landscape of fuckwittage, and I was so depressed about the options I did consider. I stood there in the ballot box and considered spoiling my ballot. Did you? But then I started thinking, what would I do? That's a good to point. To do that, because would you go for the classical cock and balls, <laughs> or would the vote counters just think that's a vote for Boris? <laughs> 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 I think that's a bit of a worry. Uh, and, I mean, and talking of Boris, right, something that I think hasn't quite st hasn't been noticed about this is, do you remember when, you know, not that long ago, Boris, obviously, he always looked like the Muppet that Jim Henson threw away, but <laughs> he was sort of thought of as a maverick, wasn't he? A yeah. sort of crazy guy, you don't know what he's going to say, he doesn't toe the party line, right? The other day, this is absolutely true, he was asked by an interviewer on some local radio thing, uh, what are you getting your girlfriend for Christmas? He said, I would like to get Brexit done. Now, <laughs> apart from anything, that's a shit <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it was after a Joe Malone candle, you're getting me a trade relationship. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, he can't now say anything else. He's no. Gonna... And I, I mean, I don't know about you, I am so fucking pissed off with get Brexit done. If I was Andrew Marr, if I was on a show and a politician just started saying get Brexit, I would say, don't. Don't fucking say it, right? <laughs> That's probably why I haven't got Andrew Marr's job. And your, your new live show called Trolls Not Dolls, which is uh, touring in January. Yeah. What's the show about? It's about rage and anger and political shouting on social media. Because my belief is this very angry thing, whereby no one has got any nuance and no one can sort of accept anything except their team. Yes. Uh, begins there. That social media has created this and that, thing. But that seems to go across every aspect of life at the minute. I think it does create every aspect of life. Because I think people think, you know, oh, it's this thing happening on a website, so it affects you and the screen, and they get it with politics. But I think it affects truth and culture and relationships and mental health. I mean, look, let me give you a quick example, right, okay. of just, like, something that I like did. Like this, you've got a clicker. I brought a clicker, I brought a clicker nice. right? So... Right, so this is uh, a picture you'll have seen, right, yeah. of uh, a person, you know who that is. Uh, I saw that picture, I screenshotted it, and I wrote, breaking Lulu unhappy with backing singers. <laughs> nice. It's a joke, it's an innocuous joke, isn't yeah. it? Not for the Scottish nationalists, what? Because right? if you look in the background, the Lurpak man snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> So they wouldn't have liked that either, because no. if you'd done that, if you'd done that, you would have got this kind of response. Insulting, twat, <laughs> racist, apparently. And this one, you more should have <laughs> flung. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I, to be honest with you, I'm confused about this bloke's grasp of biology. <laughs> because... <laughs> Does he mean that my mum should have swallowed my dad's sperm and therefore I wouldn't have been born? But if she had spat it out, I wouldn't have been born either. True. So what, what, what do you think he's, he's on about? What do I think he's driving at? Yeah. I'm not sure Ross McBot has really thought it through. <laughs> no. Given, <laughs> given that he's got the cutest avatar and yet the filthiest mouth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I know. Like going around as Tweety Pie saying your mum should have swallowed my <laughs> dad. <laughs> I also love the fact that he's heated up the Scottishness. Yeah, he hasn't said mum, he said, yeah, more. Yeah, more. Should have swallowed, because he wants to be as Scottish as possible. But my point is, that's an innocuous joke. It doesn't say yeah. anything yeah. about Nicola Sturgeon. But people get furious about it, because of this notion that anything at all said about a member of your team is like a personal assault. Sure. Now, and that's, I think, where the problem is, that people can't just think, oh, yeah, that doesn't matter, that doesn't affect me yes. that he said something about someone I might believe in politically. And does it affect you when, when you get uh, comments like that? Are you... That one doesn't particularly. I have had comments that I, I've thought, oh, that's... A... But actually, my process has always been to try and deal with them like hecklers. I've always yeah. thought, you know, there's the thing about don't feed the trolls. Yeah. I always thought, well, they're hecklers and our job as comedians is to kind of 
put them down, to, to own them in some way. Let me show you my favourite. Yeah, own. of course. My yeah. favourite own. I mean, one of the things about trolls as well yeah. is they always think they know who you are. Right. They think they know what you're saying and they will assume stuff about you in order to slag you off, right? So here's a strange example of that. And actually, this involves Corbyn and Johnson from the last election. Right. Uh, which was, in the last election, Boris Johnson called Jeremy Corbyn a mutton-headed old mugwump. So I said, nothing makes you want to vote for Corbyn more than Boris Johnson using, and thinking it's adorable, his stupid Billy Bunter language. So I said that, but a bloke called Frank Watson has a go. He says, you haven't read much Billy Bunter, have you, at Badil? And I was able to say, that is not correct, and then attach this photograph. Oh, nice. <laughs> that is me. <laughs> with my Billy Bunter collection in 1975 in the Young Observer. And that <laughs> is something where finally my weird childhood has come good yeah. in <laughs> troll defeating. You look like the happiest hostage ever. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, that, so I think you have to play with them, is the point. You right, have to not get furious with them, you have to play with them. It hasn't always been like this, Twitter. That's what's frustrating. Like, yeah. like when you started, when I started, I remember it being quite a nice place. Yeah. No, I remember <laughs> being told, a woman said to me, you must come on this website, it's like a lovely, lovely cocktail party. Is that how yeah, she That's what she it? said, no. with all your friends in it. Now yeah. it's like a cocktail party in which uh, a lot of Nazis have gate-crashed, isn't it? <laughs> <That's what it's laughs> like. One person who's a big fan of Twitter is uh, Trump. Yeah. Do you... Uh, do you get stuck into him? Well, yeah, I, I do. I think he's a very important figure mm. uh, in the whole idea of how important this troll thing is, because he himself is a troll and he's president of the United States. And not yeah. just because he's on Twitter all the time, he uses that language. He uses both the typography, the capital letters, the abuse, the conspiracy theorising. I mean, this discourse of trolls is now right at the centre of power, right? Um, and, I mean, I'll, I'll just show you some stuff about him. That's the world's weirdest, most frightening ornamental <laughs> chess set. <laughs> <laughs> Even the painting is depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, I, all, I respond a lot to his tweets, so this was an interesting one. Uh, sort of thing he says all the time. After years of Comey, with the phony and dishonest Clinton investigation and more running the FBI, its reputation is in tatters. I said, spelling tatters with a capital letter makes it look like the FBI's reputation is in a wine bar <laughs> in Basel. <laughs> um, Trenny, I got trolled incredibly for that. Really? I'm not going to show you all the trolls, but yeah, you didn't yeah. say anything about Trump and you get, essentially, troll farms just coming at you. Right. Away. And do you... I love the idea that he's reading them. I love that. He, on the and, toilet. I think, and I think he probably does. But given that, he, you know, he's, he must. I love the idea he read that one he probably... and thought, Basildon, I'm going to nuke him. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of talking about, like, um, you know, you, you do, you talk about tough subjects. You've done a documentary about, like, you met Holocaust deniers. Yeah, I did a documentary for the BBC. I haven't, it's not out yet. It's yeah. now, it comes out next year. Uh, on, on Holocaust denial. It was actually really, really hideous in yeah. lots of ways. Um, I, it's, part, it's, it's in a way the same kind of thing, which is when people say you should ignore the trolls, a lot of people say you should ignore, obviously, at the hard end of it, people like Holocaust deniers. And I would agree with that ten years ago, because I would agree, don't give them airtime. Yes. But now, they fucking have airtime, yeah. just not on screens like this one. Yes. You know, and that's the problem. Very, very... You know, this stuff is very widely read. So, yeah, I, I met... <laughs> I mean, there's some funny stuff in it. Like, I, I met one, and I met him because he trolled me. As soon as it was announced that programme was happening, right, this bloke uh, who put an axe through a TV on Holocaust Memorial Day in a place called Ennis in, Nor in Ireland in 2015. Yeah, yeah. He trolled me and said, you should come and meet me and I'll, I'll tell you blah, blah, blah. So I went to his Facebook site, big picture of Hitler, big thing saying the Second World War was actually started by the Jews, and then, you know, on Facebook they have this. You go to information about him, it says, politics, moderate. <laughs> <laughs> so wow. I met him and he was, you know, difficult. <laughs> and you know what? I didn't convince him that the Holocaust happened. And what I did got... do was have a drink afterwards, and I haven't had a drink for two years. You know I think you, you've earned that. People thought about applauding him and then <laughs> yeah. weren't sure about it. Like, <laughs> should we applaud David Baddiel starting to drink again? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Did meeting Holocaust deniers affect your opinions on comedy? I do jokes about the Holocaust, yeah. right? It's not the subject matter, it's the joke that counts. So here is a joke that I think is fine, actually rather beautiful, about the Holocaust. So 
after the war, a Holocaust survivor dies of natural causes, goes to heaven, and when he gets there, God asks him to tell a Holocaust joke. And the survivor does. And God says, that's not funny. And the survivor says, well, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> Uh, so I do think you can make jokes about it, but then, actually, Graham Linehan, the writer of uh, Father Ted, sent me this thing, which you can read on a website called The Daily Stormer, which is an alt-right website in America, and it's basically instructions to use comedy to spread very bad neo-Nazi ideas. Right. So I, re I look at this on the documentary, and there's a bit which just says, pretend you're joking. Be funny, oh, really? right? But we obviously do really want to gas kikes. That's what it says, right. right? We really want to gas kikes. That's not the point. Do it in plain sight. Use comedy as a kind of disguise right. to spread the ideas. And the problem with that for comedians is, like, I want people to be able to joke about anything. But if their motivation is actually to spread hate, then it's complicated. Yeah. And also, the added thing to that is that everyone in the room laughed at that Holocaust joke that you just told, but if there's a some journalist in the room, it's so easy to go, sick, badil, cracks, Holocaust gag. And then we live in an era, no-one reads articles, we read headlines. Isn't, yeah. isn't it amazing how things billow and spin? No, I agree with that, but I also wouldn't stop me. Yeah. Because I think you have to be able to express your own truth... Absolutely. What, ..and not second-guess what the cunts are going to do. Yeah, completely. <laughs> but... Uh, but that, that's true. <laughs> but that's what... In fact... It feels like that's how we fix all this. There should be a newspaper where all these articles end up that's just called What the Cunts Think. <laughs> <laughs> a little appendix. Like, you go, oh, look, it's in What the Cunts Think, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah so that you know that. Yeah. Yeah. You can move on. And that's another thing I talk about a lot in the show, that truth, it, it, the nuances of truth are a real casualty of all this. But I do also think... Actually, can I just show you one yeah, more thing absolutely, to sort of finish yeah. off with? Here's a good example <laughs> of how I think there is a positive side to all this, right? So here I'm talking to Jason Manford, uh, the comedian, about anti-Semitism, in fact. He's asking me about anti-Semitism in, in, in the Labour Party and can I explain it to him? And we end up talking about meeting up in Cornwall, where we both are, right? He's on tour, I'm just on holiday or whatever. And then a bloke interrupts and goes, come to Penzance if you have the time. I'll show you definitive evidence that the anti-Semitism smear campaign is a demonstrable international fraud. And I say... There's been some changes recently. <laughs> <the tourist board>. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then, right? One of my followers, James Carl Brace, says, "I have the poster ready, and you can see <laughs> we'll show you definitive evidence that the anti-Semitism smear campaign is a demonstrable international fraud." But, uh, Jonathan Mott says, "Welcome to Cornwall. We'll show you definitive <laughs> evidence that the anti-Semitism smear campaign is a demonstrable international fraud." And I love that because yeah. it feels to me like suddenly something quite horrible and a bit aggressive and whatever has been transformed into something absurd and joyful. Almost like a fun cocktail party. Almost like a fun, wonderful cocktail. Party. Ladies and gentlemen, please give up for my guest the fantastic David Bedell! Yeah.